Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. The Catholic Archdiocese of Accra Communication Office presents Catholic, Catholic Time, Time for, for the, the Word. word. A teaching program designed to interpret the scriptures to you and bring you a better understanding. Make a date with us this and every Thursday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. on Unique 95.7 FM as we share the word of God and know more about the Catholic faith. Contact us on 020-815-0821. Catholic time for the word. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Catholic Time for the Word, a teaching program designed to help us get a better interpretation and understanding of the scripture. My name is Ernest Senanu Doblo. We are talking about a season on the Catholic calendar that gets us ready for Christmas, and that is Advent. Get interactive with us via test on 0208 150 821. That is 0208-150-821. On Facebook, we are there as Catholic Time for the Word on Unique FM. Reverend Father Anthony Agnes Edumensa has taken his seat and he will lead us in a prayer before we begin our discussions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, I want to say thank you for how far you have brought us. As we look back uh, to this year, you can already count our blessings because you have been so good to us. And as we begin a new churches, church year, we ask for the grace to finish this year as well. And above all, to come close to you at the end of our days. Make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, it's always good to have you with us in the studio. Yeah, I'm happy to be here every time. Yeah. Like I said in the introduction, we are talking about Advent. What do you have for us to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Advent season. Um, in the Catholic Church, as you know, we, whenever we are about to celebrate something that is very, very, very important, we prepare for it. Uh, that is the mind behind Advent. We don't approach that important thing just like that. We have time to prepare for it, just like those who are students. <laughs> whenever you are going to write exams, you prepare by what vision week, you know, revise before the exams. Nobody just say, I'm going to write exams and go to write. You revise before you go for the exam. So, Advent is, is something like that. A time to prepare for Christmas. So, here, the exams is the Christmas and Advent is the vision, so to say, you know. So, how much we put into Advent uh, will determine how well you enjoy your Christmas. In the same way, how much you put into your vision will tell you how many marks you get in the actual exams. So it's very important we take Advent seriously. And that's why we, the Kali Church, has put aside four Sundays, four weeks, to just prepare ourselves for Christmas. So for Catholics, Christmas is not just a social program. It's not a commercial program. It's a spiritual program. It's a spiritual celebration. Mm. Father, uh, before you even go on, I, I want you to give us a background of how the concept of Advent began. All right. Advent uh, is uh, English, but we know that it comes from a Latin word, Adventus. Adventus in Latin means coming. Obviously, you say coming, what is coming or who is coming? And so we say we are preparing for the coming of Christ. Uh, so basically, Advent is preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ. In our history, we know of Jesus Christ, Jesus is coming in two forms. He has already come in the flesh. Uh, there's a big word we use for that, incarnation. Uh, Jesus, God becoming man, uh, John 1, 14, and taking his flesh amongst us, you know. That is the first coming. He became one of us. The second coming we look at is, he said that I'm going to pay a place for your comeback. I know you're going to ask me questions on that soon. Uh, but uh, just to let you know, these are the comings you have in, uh, in, uh, in, in Advent, you know. So it is a time of preparation for Christmas. And then again, it's a time to say we are beginning afresh. It is the first day, is the first part of the liturgical year, the calendar of the Kali Church. So already in Kali Church, we have begun our new year. This is our new year. Advent is like our January. You know, when we are in January, it means we are in a new year. You know, 
So Advent for us Catholics is our January of the normal civil calendar. So whenever we are in Advent, means we have started, started a new year. So Catholic Church all over the world, we have begun a new year already. Though we are still in uh, November, we are starting on our new year. You know, because our calendar is quite different from what the, the world also uses as its calendar. You know. Okay. And when exactly was um, this Advent season instituted in the Catholic Church? Advent has been here for many, many centuries. Uh, usually, things that we do in the church start quietly and then they only get universal recognition. It's only when they get that universal recognition that we call, we start counting. That means that that is the point where the thing became uh, started, you know. So Christians over the centuries have been preparing for Christ's birth, you know, because people, Christians realize that who is Jesus? If Jesus is God and is so special to our history, then let us sit down half a time to mark his birth. So as they pray for his birth, they want to also uh, prepare for him, I mean, that birth in a special way. So historically, uh, it started many centuries back, but we can say that as a church, universal church, for somewhere in the eighth century, and uh, that laws were put in place that, uh, uh, not laws, but let me say rules uh, were put in place how to celebrate Advent. In the 8th century, we had the, the first of Advent season. So from the 8th century onwards, Advent became the beginning of the church's calendar. Then in the 9th century, the four-week cycle of Advent uh, was instituted. Uh, you know, that is okay, now Advent is for four weeks. You know, so historically, this is how Advent has been evolving to our present day celebration. Father, you did mention that as time went on, you know, rules and all that were added to, to, to the lives of Christians. Yes. Guiding them how they should celebrate mm. or prepare for Christmas. And that, that is how Advent came about. But that means there is a purpose for Advent. Mm. Tell us about it. All right. I have I've given a glimpse of that already in the introduction. Yeah, give us the details yes, now. Uh, the fact that uh, we, we, are, we are not just preparing for anything, but we are praying for God. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of Advent is to prepare for the coming of Christ. One, his coming, as I, I said already, uh, into our world some 2015 years ago when he was born in Bethlehem, in Judea. You know, so we want to celebrate that. It is Christ's, Christ's birth is our birth. And, it, and everything about Jesus is so important to Christians, we can't just let go. So his birthday, we celebrate. I know that <laughs> in churches, uh -huh, uh, non kali churches especially, this, some, of, some of my fellow charismatic churches, the, the birthday of their pastor is a huge celebration, you know? Uh, their pastor's birthday is a huge celebration in their church. How much more birthday of God? You know, so it's a preparation uh, for such a birthday, which is once in a lifetime, God becoming man. The second purpose, as I said already, is preparing for, for, for the end of time. Or Jesus will come back again to judge us. And when he came back, he came as a savior of the world. But he says, I'll come back. He's coming back not to save us, because he has done that already, but to judge us. How we have used that salvation that he gave us. So the second purpose is that we prepare for the end of life. That if Jesus should come today, if the trumpet sounds today, where will you be? You know, so we get ready for life. That when that day comes, we are not taken uh, by surprise. So these are the purposes of uh, the Advent season. So when does Advent begin, Father? Advent begins usually um, the Sunday after Christ the King, the Feast of Christ the King. You know, so after the Feast of Christ the King, the next Sunday is, uh, is Advent season. And that is why, you know, we had Christ the King feast only last Sunday, and today is Thursday, and the coming Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent. So that's how it, it begins. Christ the King ends our, our year, and then Advent begins a new one. So it begins with the, uh, after our celebration of Christ the King, so the Sunday after becomes the first Sunday of Advent, you know. Usually it is in November, uh, the last Sunday in November, sometimes uh, last two Sundays in November, but from what we have seen since the new calendar uh, was uh, introduced, it always ends in November. It starts in November, you know, and then goes through four weeks, then Christmas comes. But it's calculated four weeks before Christmas. So it's supposed to be four Sundays before Christmas. That's how the calculation is done. So it begins um, after Christ the King feast, and it runs for four weeks. 
or four Sundays. Okay, and it ends actually on 24th of uh, December, uh, 24th of December, because that day is the eighth of Christmas. So just before Christmas, Advent comes to an end. Then Christmas Eve is there, 24th, then 25th is of the Christmas season, then the, the, the actual celebration is held. So this is the duration of the Advent uh, season. It begins here and ends there. Father, I came across an article that, that mentioned the omission of Sundays in the counting of the Advent period. But it also came across the Gaudete Sunday. What is this Sunday? Um, okay, let me just say we have four Sundays of Advent. Mm -hmm. um, no, no omission, maybe omission, I don't know what they meant by that, but what they want to say is that each Sunday of Advent is important. So the first Sunday of, of, of Advent is called First Sunday. Uh, the second one is called Second Sunday. The third one is what you just mentioned, the Gaudete Sunday. It is very important because the word Gaudete is a Latin word for rejoice and rejoice. So it comes kind of saying that rejoicing Sunday. It's all because on that Sunday, if you go to Mass, the first words of the priest to the is rejoice, you know, for your Savior is close at hand, you know. So the word rejoice beginning that Sunday worship becomes, it gives it the, the name. So Gaudete Sunday because uh, the words of that Sunday are on rejoice. Indeed, the reading of that day also on rejoicing the Lord. But it is also Gaudete Sunday because it is halfway through Advent. So the church is saying that, look, we have done half of Advent already, so you can rejoice. You know, if you're writing exams and you have uh, five papers to write, and then you have written three, you know, you have you have some kind of a sign of relief. You can you can relax a bit, you know, because you have done more than half. So the third Sunday, the Gaudete Sunday, is a relief for us. Oh, we have done two more already, and this is the third one. So there's hope for us. We are closer to our salvation. Uh, Jesus is closer, and that God is closer. So with that, we are supposed to rejoice because we have come too far to return, and that is the truth. Anybody who works with God uh, has to come to the fact that. When you come too far with the Lord, there's no need to re return. And the Gaudete Sunday, Rejoicing Sunday, has that meaning. That you have to rejoice because you have done too many Sundays already. You have come too far to return. God is waiting for us. Father, what are the symbols of Advent? Um, Advent has uh, quite a number of symbols. Let me mention briefly the Advent wreath. Um, I hope you will, we shall discuss that in detail sometime soon. Sure. But the Advent wreath, a round thing that is contained with candles, you know, so it helps us to keep count of uh, the Advent season, especially, especially the four Sundays, you know. One other symbol is the fact that we don't sing uh, Gloria at Mass. When I say Gloria, those who are not Catholic, so the Gloria is just the song of the angels. When uh, uh, the angels announce to the shepherds uh, that God, Jesus, has been born in Bethlehem. We are told that multitude of angels join them to sing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people of good will. That is the Gloria. So if you come to the college church, we told the Gloria is not something for new words in the Bible. It's the song of the angels when Jesus was born. So because that song was first sung in the Bible by angels on the day Jesus was born, we reserved the song to Christmas. Because that is the day that song was born, so to say, Gloria. It was first sung on Christmas Day. So during Advent, we don't sing it. We keep it to Christmas. Where we, can have, we shall have all the strength to sing it as the angels sang so on you, that you, first Christmas Day. You, you, know. you think when, when you sing it now, you don't have the strength to sing it when Christmas comes? You should have. But it makes you yearn for it. You know, it's the yearning for it. Now, when you are yearning for something, the, 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 what you put into it becomes more. Uh -huh. Imagine you are you have been fasting, which is not a correct example, but not fasting. Let me say, imagine you you are, you are, you are not been getting food. Uh -huh. you, you are looking for food to eat. You don't get food to eat, and then after three days you are giving food. Look at the the way you 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 approach the food for the first time in three days. You are getting your food. How we get to me? The the yen, the zeal which is you eat, and that's what you want to look at. So the fact that we have denied ourselves of Gloria for a number of weeks. We are going to sing it again after four good Sundays, four good weeks. There's that spirit and that we use, we shall sing with the same as spirit as the angels sang on the on the first Christmas night, you know. So the Gloria is one of the symbols. We don't sing it. Another one is the can the color of the season. 
Um, we use the violet color, which is also called sometimes the purple color, to in Advent. Uh, it's a symbol of fact that we are getting ready for for God. You know, violet color, purple color, it sounds for stand for the fact that you hope. It's a color of hope. Um, so we hope we are hoping for God, and we are hoping and I mean for the coming of Christ. About for also it's not for the fact that if we are hoping for Christ to come, then we have to also put away our sins. Because Jesus cannot sit in sin with sin. Uh, so the violet color the priests use at church, we use to decorate our church during Advent, tells us that look, if there's something in your room, in your in, in your cupboard, that Jesus would not like to see when he comes, please go and empty it. So you see, uh, Advent is a time to empty ourselves of our sins and our mistakes, our bad deeds. Our habits push them away for Christ to come and enter there. So Advent is a time we do away of our sins. That was the voice of Reverend Father Anthony Agnes Edumenta. But let me remind you that you are still tuned to Catholic Time for the Word, a teaching program designed by the Department of Social Communication of the Catholic Archdiocese of Accra to help us get a better interpretation and understanding of the Catholic faith. This evening we are talking about Advent and Father has already led us halfway through the discussion. Um, you are also reminded that as Christmas draws near, there is nothing more than sharing love among ourselves. The Catholic Church in the Archdiocese of Accra has taken it upon herself as a responsibility to help the less privileged in society by way of donation. You are called to be a part of this exercise. You can also give us whatever food, clothes, money. Get through to us via test on 0208-150-821. That is 0208-50821. Count every donation as a blessing from God, even before Christ himself comes as Christmas. Father, tell us about the Advent wreath and what it stands for. Um, the Advent wreath is one of the powerful symbols of the Advent season. And because it speaks so much to us as Christians. I pray that uh, my friends who are not Catholics uh, will have a look at this reef. Just Google Advent reef, it's on the net, you know. It is sometimes called the Advent crown because it's woven in a crown form, you know, it is round, just like the crown of Jesus. And the, the reef, it's made up of this round leaves, I can say, and candles and a stand, you know, a stand, a basin is the meaning of each of the symbols. One, the base on which the, the, the flowers and the candles are uh, is stand for God. Uh, God. And that we see that as the hands of God, the palms of God. That this world is in the palms of God, it's in the hands of God. You know, the reef is already already is round. And uh, signify the world. The world is round, we say, you know. So God contains this world. This world is contained in God's hands. So the stand is stand for God who is holding this world in his hands. Okay, so that is the stand, the base. The base is God. That God is the base. He's the foundation. He's the man, the one in charge of life. He holds life in his hands. And then the, the flowers that go around the, the reef uh, are, are usually green. Or they are in greeneries, you know. It's, it's time for hope. Mm, the fact that life is surround, you know. Life keeps going and repeating itself. That there is hope. So if today you find yourself at this part of the world, don't think that it's over. And uh, whatever comes your way, there is hope. As the green, we shall, shall continue to see green leaves around us. This life is not finished. You can hope for the better. So the, the green leaves of the Advent uh, uh, reef speaks to us. And that we should hope that there is hope even when all hope is, is finished or lost. Then we have the candles. And the candles are four, usually four. And they, they, they stand for the four weeks of the Advent season. The four Sundays especially. So each candle stands for one of the Sundays. So each Sunday, one candle is, uh, is, is lighted. Uh -huh. So on the first Sunday, one is lighted. The only one is lighted. On the second Sunday, two are lighted. On the third, three, and the fourth, four. You know, just keep count of the, the Sundays you know, of, uh, of Advent. But spiritually, these candles are standing for the 4,000 years be be between the time of Adam and Eve and the coming of Jesus. Uh, so each year, I mean, each candle stands for 1,000 years. Of waiting for the Lord. The Israelites waited a thousand years, and that thousand years, four thousand before Jesus appeared. But more importantly, uh, the candles are in colors. 
We have some in purple, one in rose. Three in purple, one in rose. And the purple, the violet candles, uh, stand for the fact that the Israelites had gone into exile at least twice. They had hoped that Christ would come and they were taken to exile uh, in Egypt. They had hoped that the Messiah would come and they were taken to exile again in Babylon, ba Babylon, you know. So twice they were sent into exile. And then the rose color stands for that rejoicing Sunday I said, no. When they had hoped that, when they came back from the exile, they had hoped that they, that was over. Only for them to come and meet uh, another oppressor. Uh, the emperor, the, the emperor uh, coming over and then uh, again ruling them in their own land. So that hope was dashed. You know, so there's a fourth candle which is also purple or violet. Again, that they, they were still hoping for the Lord. Then, usually on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, uh, we could put a white candle in the middle which stands for Christ. That, look, if we wait for Jesus for even 4,000 years, he will come. <laughs> because when he promises, he never fails. He fulfills it. It is only God that promises and fulfills. Even 4,000 years, when the Israelites had forgotten about the promise. He said they have forgotten because men and women had come and died and go. So they have all forgotten about the promise. And when the Israelites have forgotten about their promise, God couldn't forget the promise. So if you are listening to me, and you have been forgotten about God's promise in your life, when you look at the Advent Reef, you can look and say, no. Even when I forget the God's promise for my life, God has not forgotten it. So if the promise that you have forgotten, God has not forgotten. When you least expect him, you see him appearing and then giving you that crown of glory, that hope and that uh, glorification. So these are the issues we have with the Advent Reef and the meanings we have with the Advent uh, Reef. Father, in your submission, you, you talked about purple as being a symbol of the advent season and what what came to mind was lent and so my question now is is advent a penitential season hmm. all right um advent is not supposed to be a penitential season in the same light as a uh, lent uh, i don't know whether no callous will understand these words we are using i'm sorry we are talking to Kali today but lent is the time that we prepare for easter just like Advent. I told the Kali Church, whenever we are expecting something great to happen, we pray for it. So, the same way we pray for Easter, the death of Christ, I mean, the, the ultimate summit of Christianity, uh -huh, it's called Lent. The same way we pray for Christ's birth also. So, in, in, in Lent is for, for repenting, because Christ came that we repent over this, have that penitential character. But when we use purple in, in, uh, in Advent, we go for the meaning that's more about hope. You know, purple stands for uh, repentance and also hope the color purple and valley in scripture in, in religion that is it and that is for repentance or hope somebody who is hoping puts on purple you know and then somebody who's mourning so to say his sins his sins puts on the uh, violet as scripture will tell us the people of Nineveh and the rest they did you know in, when Jonah had preached to them so it is the it is the hope nature character that we take in Advent yet because Jesus is coming God is coming we can't just uh, say we can keep on living our old lives. So we are encouraged to empty ourselves. You know, John talks about uh, leveling our, our, our valleys. You know, it's so important. Filling the valleys. And he talks about also the rough roads, smoothing them. So Advent has that nature also. That we have to le level the, the valleys to our lives. You know, sin is a valley. When we sin, we have created valleys in our lives. We have to level them. And that is also the penitential aspect of it. So Advent is a time to go for confession also. So you can level every valley in your life. You can smoothen every road in your life. Why? Because Christ wants to come your way. You have to level your valley, smoothen your road for Jesus to walk and come into your heart. So we also have this nature of, of penance uh, in the course of the Advent season. Father, finally, what is expected of Catholics during the season of Advent? Uh, expectation of Catholics, uh, there are many for the sake of time. I will mention a few. One is prayer. It's prayer. Uh, we are expected to pray a lot in the time of Advent uh, because we are praying for the coming of Christ Himself, God, um, at Christmas again for at the end of our lives. So if you have not been praying, this is a time to pray, to double your prayer, if I can say it, put it that way, you know. So we need to pray more, to have more time for prayer. Mm, and that could mean also attending the Advent Vespers, uh, which is the Saturday before the Sunday, the prayers of the church. Some, most of the parishes are going to have them, I know, they are going to organize them. 
attend the prayer session, the Vespers. It's a powerful prayer of the church. You know, where we go to read the Psalms, we sing the Psalms, we listen to the, uh, scripture readings, you know, to prepare ourselves for the next day, the Sunday. So prayer is one of the, of the practices of the, the Advent season. Let us pray by praying a lot. Apart from the rosary, the Vespers is one I'm proposing. Two, we can also do so by reading scripture. Especially reading the story about the birth of Jesus uh, in, the, in Luke, in Matthew, you know, how he was born, the circumstances, the stories, the genealogies. This is the season. So when Christmas, you are reading them, you understand them well. So it's a time to read the scripture, read the Bible. So if I've not been reading the Bible all along, Advent is a time to read your Bible, especially stories about the birth of Jesus, how he was born, how God planned and make sure that 4,000 years it came to pass. You know, using people, sinners, God using sinners, using prostitutes, you know, just make sure that his plan is not, is not, is not curtailed. You know, so reading the Bible is another, is another one. Three is confession. Uh, going for confession. So, as I said earlier on, we have to let Christ to come and enter into our hearts. And he can't come to your heart if your heart is dirty. It is sin that makes our heart dirty. Because sin is sickness. You know, Jesus doesn't want to come to a, a, sick, a sick home. When he's coming, prepare for him. If, if you should hear that, that the president is visiting you, if you're not visiting you, your neighborhood, this is what you do. You know, I mean, they will, they will go through the gutters, move the gutters, they will sweep the place. A human president is coming. How much more a heavenly president, you know, eternal president is coming. We can't leave our gutters like that. We have to empty our gutters just as we do for human president. Because he's more than a human president. And for us, Catholics, when we go to confession, we are emptying and desilting our gutters. You know, so confession is one powerful uh, way of praying for through the advances. Then the last one I mentioned is uh, the one about good works, which you mentioned. Uh, good works, arms. I mean, helping the poor. Look for places, the orphanages we have, uh, to go and give things, monies, in cash, in kind, provisions. They need them. People who have no one to help to be with them. They need people to help. So please, let's find ways for me to give, put smiles on others' faces in this Advent season. So at Christmas, they can also smile. It's almost 8 o'clock and at 8 we'll make way for the next broadcast. But I want to say a very big thank you to Father for always making time with us on the program. And again, I want to say a very big thank you to you out there. It always feels great to know that you are there doing the listening. My name is Ernest Senanu Dovlu. Remember always to do good, especially when it matters most. Good evening. <music> White is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. The Catholic Archdiocese of Accra Communication Office presents Catholic, Catholic Time, Time for, for the, the Word. A teaching program designed to interpret the scriptures to you and bring you a better understanding. Make a date with us this and every Thursday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. on Unique 95.7 FM as we share the Word of God and know more about the Catholic faith. Contact us on... 020-815-0821 Catholic Time for the Word Like Moses I